Welcome back. This is a time in our history we will never forget. But how will it be remembered? Kevin Rennie, Hartford Current columnist and author of Daily Ructions, is here with us now. He's also a very frequent guest on Faces Day. Kevin, good to see you. Hello. Thank you for asking me. I want to ask you, first of all, in, in your column last week, you said that the governor was showing some leadership. And, and he does seem to be the, you know, almost the perfect person in terms of the temperament at this time in our history. Wouldn't you agree? I do agree. I, his... Um he is striking the right tones and uh, he is reassuring. And for the most part, he seems to be knowledgeable and uh, is conveying the essential information that people of Connecticut need to know. Do you believe the state should be doing more? Well, I think that uh, as it ramps up, uh, it will con it will do more. So uh, uh, it's just a question of, of, I think, the pacing. So, for instance, uh, this week, my column is about choices that people who've lost their job have with uh, with health insurance. They may not be able to keep the health insurance that they have, and uh, there are alternatives. And so uh, you know, there, there are things that the state is going to need to do, I think, to supplement the choices that, uh, that people have now. Kevin, your readers know that you are certainly no fan of President Trump. You've called him a, quote, loathsome demagogue in your columns. Yes, his approval rating, start. though, is high right now in terms of how he's handling this crisis. Do you agree that he's handling the crisis well, or do you think that he is? No, been? no, I think he is. I think he has been what much many of us would expect, erratic, uh, narcissistic, uh, sometimes just sounding like an imbecile. But we're waiting for that miracle that he promised when it's just going to go away. We studied the plague and elementary school and things like that. How will this period in our history be remembered? Well, I think it will be, re be remembered as a uh, as a, a really surprising time for the uh, Western world that we are so vulnerable to a uh, to to a virus. And um, I also think that there will be uh, changes in um, in how we're prepared and uh, I think that there will be changes in China and uh, and uh, how they, uh, they they have some of their basic mores of of uh, handling animals. Kevin, I want yeah, we hear stories that some of these wild animal open air markets that sell bats and raccoons are just uh, part of the problem here. Well, you're right. When I, I apparently we're all learning more about this than we ever thought we we would need to, but when an when there's a virus in an animal that can jump to human beings, that's where the trouble starts. Yeah, Kevin, 2020, obviously an election year, but it is going to be the most unusual election year. Let's begin with talking about uh, former Vice President Joe Biden, the presumptive Democratic nominee, but he really can't get much airtime these days. How, how do you think that will play out as we approach November? Oh, I think for now he just he 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 has to maintain his dignity. Uh, uh, speak some to remind people that he's there, but I don't think he should try to elbow his way onto this onto center stage with this. And you know, this is this is a serious moment when we're trying to have less politics, not more politics. And he's, he is he, it, certainly it seems he's secured the Democratic nomination for president. He can wait. Uh, he to uh, launch his fall campaign. We'll see what happened. What's going to happen with conventions? Uh, but um, I. I, I think that there's there's not an uh, there's not an opportunity here for him to to uh, make any dramatic uh, impressions on the public other than by uh, speaking now and then in an in an intelligent and dignified way. Next year, if pre if uh, former Vice President Biden is elected president, he will turn 79 years old. So the choice of his running mate is crucial this year. He has said it will be a woman. Who do you think it will be? Any thoughts? Any predictions? Well, I, you know, I, I, I thought, you know, of course, we'll go through several rounds of who's up and who's down, but certainly Kamala Harris is, uh, is one choice, and Amy Klobuchar is another, and uh, Governor, uh, I think it's Widmer of, um, of Michigan, who, uh, who uh, Donald Trump seems to have turned his sights on recently because they're quite concerned about, uh, about Michigan. Uh, which is a crucial state in November. So he certainly has he certainly has plenty of choices. Let's talk about um, well, I'm just going to say that that uh, if this were if this were March of 2019, 
I think Andrew Cuomo might be unstoppable for the Democratic presidential nomination. Many people are saying that, that uh, his performance in, in handling coronavirus in New York is certainly uh, has some Democrats buzzing about that. But uh, yeah, he, in many ways, he has become the uh, the soothing, intelligent voice of the nation. Do you think there's any likelihood that Biden could that something no. could happen at the convention? I mean, he's going to have enough delegates, clearly. Yes. Yes. Uh, let's talk about the state races. Uh, there are five congressional races up this year and also the whole legislature. But how does that impact uh, this election? Because the conventions presumably will be canceled. I don't know that we've heard definitely that they're canceled at the end of May. But uh, how are the candidates going to be chosen? How will they get their message out? Well, I, it's going to be very hard. It's just going to be it's, it's hard to break through. And uh, I think that one of the things you'll see is that uh, Fundraising is hard for challengers, uh, not only because they're not going to be able to become known in the traditional manner, but also because I think people are going to be less likely to give. Uh, for legislative candidates who who may uh, use uh, taxpayer funding of their campaigns, it'll be a little different. But I, I, I do think the public may not be particularly interested uh, or engaged in traditional legislative campaigns. It's going to be hard to get people's attention. You know, Kevin, we uh, know you as someone who wears many hats. You're a writer, you're an author, a columnist, and uh, but a lawyer as well. How has it impacted uh, your daily life? Well, uh, uh, strangely enough, there's been a lot of real estate going on, uh, which is uh, which is a good sign for uh, for what whatever is ahead. And um, also, I've had clients uh, uh, calling and and others calling because they're concerned about not having. Uh, documents such as will or a um, or healthcare uh, directives, and uh, and so those have been weighing more on people's minds, particularly older people and uh, and those who work in healthcare. So we're just uh, I know I and other lawyers are trying to accommodate them as quickly as as we can. One less thing to worry about is uh, is is helpful. Absolutely. All right. Kevin Rennie, Daily Ruction's Heart for Current. We appreciate you joining us today. And hopefully next time you join us, it'll be right here on our desk. Right there in that studio. Absolutely. Thank, Thank you, Dennis. Thanks, Kevin. When we